Test, testing, one, two, three. Test, test. Let me switch over to the Samson. Testing, one, two, three, test, test. Okay, people can hear that. Testing, one, two, three, test, test, test. All right, let's check. Can you guys hear us okay? Testing anymore? Testing, one, two, three. Okay, Instagram can hear. Okay, good, sorry about that. There's something up with this mic, with my normal mic, we'll figure out what's going on. Okay, everyone can hear? Okay, good. Well. Good, e good evening, everyone. As I mentioned, I hope everyone's having a good um, Mother's Day. I just wanted to take a few moments uh, before I start my next live on caffeine and cardiovascular health just to wish everyone a Mother's Day and actually remember my mom um, and to share with people how important uh, women have been in my journey um, and uh, so supportive of everything that I've been doing. In particular, I want to sort of look at uh, my mom's influence and then walk it all the way back to today. Um, but some of you may know, I grew up originally in India, but I had the incredible honor of actually not only having, uh, uh, you know, I had my mom through a large part of my life, but my grandmother and also my great grandmother and also had a great grandfather. But I had a chance to have um, uh, seen and experienced my great grandmother, my grandmother and my mom. So very, very fortunate. But what was um I guess a singular connection between all those women where they were extremely uh, strong women, uh, very um, solid women, had tremendous amounts of integrity and always fought for others and fought for themselves. So I grew up around that very, very interesting environment. Uh, you know, my mom uh, grew up in an India, which was pre-colonial, uh, pre-independence India, colonialist India. She was born in the late 30s. Um, she died in January 2012 um, of something called pulmonary fibrosis. But her journey is quite extraordinary because um, when I was growing up, my mom would say that, you know, when we were deciding to come to America, you know, in India, you can get discriminated like nine different ways. But in, in America, at least you'll only get discriminated three times, uh, three different ways. But if you work hard, you can overcome that. In fact, she told me that even in America, you're going to have to work three to ten times more harder than the average person even to get uh, you know, if, if, if the other person got uh, something on an A, you're going to have to, um, for the same amount of work, you're probably going to uh, get less of a grade. So you're going to have to work much harder. So my mom was extremely aware of the realities of the world. And the reason that she was aware of this is because of the condition she grew up in. So if you take the world back now, uh, imagine you're going back uh, in time to 1930s India. And you have to understand that is at a time in India when the British are still running India. Um, there is, you know, hardcore the Indian caste system, which is racism on steroids or elitism on steroids. Um, women, um, by and large, uh, in that period, were supposed to essentially be housewives. Uh, very few women got educated at that time. OK, so just think about that. My mom was a dark skinned Indian woman. OK, Indians come in all different colors. And in India, there's a significant amount of racism. Obviously, people who are lighter colored uh, are treated better than the people who are darker colored. Um, and then you have the fact that my mom was among the lower caste in India. So, and then she's a woman. All right. And then she's growing up in deep South India, which is not. It's almost like you're growing up in Mississippi versus growing up in New York. Um, and to add on top of all this, um, my mother's father uh, literally uh, ran off with the maid, you know, or the uh, a person who was, you know, doing some cleaning in their small home that they had because everyone always got people to support them. And my grandmother, my mom's mom was one of nine kids. So overnight, um, my mom and her uh, brothers were thrown out of the house, literally made homeless. The family got split up. And that was when my mom was eight years old. So this young woman who, who grows up in these very interesting conditions, 
uh, decides that she is um, going to stand up on her own two feet. At eight years old, she realizes she can't fully trust men. So she saw what her father did to her mother, that she was going to become an independent woman. In a condition in India, which is again, you know, pre-independence India, uh, a condition where she's recognized as a lower caste Indian woman, dark skinned lower caste Indian woman who speaks the South Indian language. And my mom would tell me stories just to give you some examples of the caste system. When she would go to the well to get water, the upper caste Brahmins would shoo her away like a pig. And, you know, if they're Brahmins listening, you know, I don't take it personally, but that's what the conditions of the caste system were. So they would um, they would tell her that she could not come to the well um, uh, until the Brahmins had gone and uh, used the well first because the, and they would use the name S-U-D-R, S is like the N word in India to shoo her away. And my mom said like an animal. So that's a condition my mom grew up in, a broken family, um, a conditions where women were not supposed to be educated. So this, this, this woman, almost one in a trillion opportunity or a tr trillion chance, uh, what does my mom do? My mom um, figures out that she wants to get educated. She realizes that education is the ultimate passport out of oppression. So I'll repeat that again. My mom figured out that education was the ultimate passport out of oppression. She had her oldest brother, um, her oldest brother, was very, very supportive of her. He was quite a progressive person. And my mom's older oldest brother, um, someone says frozen video. Is that true? You guys still not able to hear me? Well, I wonder what's going on. That's weird. Some interference with the system, people are saying. Let me see if anything's okay. I'm not sure what's going on, everyone. Um, Apparently, according to this, everything should be good. Okay. All right. So people are saying it's fine. So uh, in that condition, um, everyone's saying it's okay. My dear mother decides that she's going to get educated. And she had a brother who, you know, was uh, figured out how to get educated. Men were given a little more um, advances. And he, too, was a pretty incredible a human being. So my mom came from this incredible, uh, I guess, genetics or her mother, who also was a very strong woman. He, he, by the way, you have to understand in India, men and women do not get divorced. Divorced is so looked down upon. And so my mom grew up in this environment. When she went to school, she couldn't, people would ask her, where's your father? You know, how come your father's not with your mother? And it was one of those scarlet letters. It was extremely embarrassing for her. Um, she couldn't even talk about it. She always felt that she was a less of a human being on so many ways, right? Coming, uh, the concept of a broken household was so looked upon in those days. Um, and so it was, uh, someone said, leave that shitty platform on Facebook. So this was quite difficult for her because she was, uh, had all these factors against her. And on top of that, she came from a broken household, which was extremely uh, looked down upon. So she almost lived in this very, what she would say in this very shameful type environment. So anyway, she decides to get educated and my mom works extremely hard. And she would talk about how hard it was even to, um, you know, work in this environment. She wanted to study mathematics. Women typically did not study that subject. And so my mom studies mathematics and she said no one would help her, right? The guys would hang out, at least they had friends because there was very low preponderance of women in math. She would essentially have to do all the studying on her own. And if you talk to a guy in those days because of the relation between men and women, you were, you could be called a slut or something, okay? Women are supposed to be in their lane and men were supposed to be in their lane. So she so essentially had to learn total independence, had to learn all this stuff on her own. Even she couldn't get uh, tutors, all this kind of stuff, right? So anyway, my mom ends up getting a bachelor's degree in mathematics. And then after that, um, she uh, works extremely hard and ends up, at the end of the day, she ends up getting a statistics, a master's in statistics. Statistics is a very, very difficult subject within math. And I think still to this day only, uh, she's still the only woman who's graduated from that college with a master's in statistics. This is now... Jesus, 60 years later. 
So you can imagine the conditions that she went through, but her upbringing uh, in many ways, people would think, this was, someone's asking what year was this? This was in 1930s, okay, 1940s, all right? So, but my, someone said my mom was a smart cookie. My mom was not just a smart cookie, she was very resilient. Um, she had learned that she had, was very determined, had an incredible will. So in spite of her being a woman, in spite of her uh, growing up in this low caste environment, in spite of her growing up in a, a broken home, um, she had figured out how that through hard work that she could attain it through education. So, so if you look at India, think of the South of India as like the old deep South, uh, like the old deep South here and the North India, you know, North of India is considered a place like Bombay or North of South India, Bombay and Delhi. So my mom gets a job as a mathematics teacher in Bombay. And, uh, so here's a woman again, who moves from this small town woman who decides to go to the big city again, quite extraordinary at a time again, when women weren't supposed to do any of these things. So she goes to Bombay, uh, gets a job, becomes a head of the math department, teaching mathematics. And her brother who was there is the one who arranged the marriage to my father. He had met my father on an interview. My, he interviewed my father for something else. And he, um, uh, said, you know, I have this, sister who you may, uh, that you make a good match, as they say. And what was interesting was my father, this gets even more interesting, uh, was uh, presented with, he told me, with different women, you know, that he could choose. One woman, he said, was extremely beautiful, um, but, you know, uh, he, he didn't find her interesting because she wasn't educated. Another woman was extremely wealthy, but not that attractive. Um, but then when he met my mom, he he saw that she was uh, had many of these wonderful attributes, but she was also educated. So my dad too, because he, it's a whole story I could do, do with my dad, I'll do that on Father's Day. But my dad came from an environment, um, again, from a low caste Indian environment where he hadn't seen a book when he was, I think until 10 years old uh, under a mango tree. So my mom and my dad connect. Now, how did they connect? My dad was in this very uh, ambivalent stage on who to marry. He didn't know who to marry at that time. And so my mother contacted him, which is unheard of in India. My mother contacted my father and said, you know, my brother thinks you and I would make a good match. I'd be deeply honored, you know, if, you know, our marriage took place. So my mom went out, it, I mean, it, there was no dating allowed in those days, right? It was looked down upon. It was typically these arranged marriages, but my mom went out of her way to contact my dad. I, I learned about this many, many years later. So my mom had, was fearless. That's the best thing I can say. Fearless against the odds. And so as a child, when I witnessed a caste system in India, where when I was a young kid, I went to someone's home to get a glass of water after uh, my friend and I had played. And his mother called me all sorts of low caste names, kept me out of the house and wouldn't even give me water. And when she did, she gave it in a very different type of, uh, you know, uh, Tumblr than she did her own son. And that's when I learned about the caste system. And so my mom brought me up to recognize that, um, that I would have to work much harder as she had to succeed. And that's frankly been the journey of my entire life. So my journey has been always to fight for the underdog. And I've always taken it on the chin uh, on this issue of race and caste, et cetera. I don't talk about it a lot because I've spent most of my time fighting for others um, but I can tell you that if it wasn't for my mother's influence, um, I don't think I would be able to do the things I do today. I don't think I would fight as vigorously for what's just because my mom's entire life was fighting for justice, using her life as a journey for that. But, you know, when I got that first job at that medical school as a 14 year old kid, my mom at that time had become a systems analyst. So think about this. My mom comes from this really small village goes through all these things and ends up becoming a systems analyst. And my mom compelled me to become a systems analyst, uh, a systems guy. So that's why when I share with all of you, and I keep emphasizing that one of the most important things is education. Uh, if you don't get educated, you will be enslaved. And that's where my mom was headed. And that was a destiny of people of my caste from India. They were supposed to essentially be coconut pickers. The caste system basically said, whatever family you're born into, that's what you should be. 
So that's where we are today. If you look at today, you know, my journey beyond my mother, the incredible women when I worked in that medical school as a 14 year old kid, here was these women who were relegated to essentially, um, someone said there's prom streaming to Facebook. That's weird. I'm not sure why. Let me find out. Hold on everyone. Uh, I'm not sure where Facebook is having a problem, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna end this broadcast if people don't mind. Uh, I'm gonna stop, everyone just wait. I'm gonna start up again. Let me stop and start up again. I'm gonna start this whole thing again. Let me 